if you can't. All right, as you were saying, so email marketing stuff. Yeah, so this is kind of like part one of the episode today. Right. Um, so with what I'm doing, mm -hmm. I when I was doing the Notion videos, I was like, hey, I'm just going to share Notion stuff. There's like loads of random videos. Um, and then from a business perspective, everyone's screaming at me like, be a consultant. You need a product. You need this, this, this. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know. Uh, so I was like, I'm going to stick to YouTube videos because I can do that bit now. I'm not as incompetent um, <laughs> and I have a product. I'm I'm not as incompetent. I didn't say I'm not incompetent. Um, <laughs> now, now that I have a product, um, there are things that I've, I'm finding myself asking, why don't I have that? And I'm like, oh, I do have that or I did start that and then I didn't really finish that. It's kind of like a, another unfinished thing that I was like, that's a cool idea and I never got around to doing it. So the newsletter I did for a while, um, but I I just stopped doing it. There's lots of small reasons, but the main reason is CBA. I just couldn't be asked to do it anymore. Uh, uh, underline, I didn't have the motivation to do it. What I do, <laughs> what I do do, funny, um, <laughs> I knew it was coming as well, uh, is I'm in Obsidian all the time. I'm in the community yeah. all the time. And the Obsidian Roundup is massive. Like uh, Elena Koenig, love the roundup and i don't want to repeat the roundup because it does an amazing job of it mm. but where i feel like like i read the roundup and it's kind of like a newsletter i'm like oh yeah that's cool i like that idea and then i go off to whatever direction but i don't when i when i see some of the things in there i'm like how do you do that why are people doing that and it's kind of like i i don't want just the this conversation happened this conversation happened i want to know where it went if that makes sense. Um, Do you want to go a little bit deeper on the conversations? It's like, here's the surface level, but here's the depth, here's the moreness, the context that surrounds it. Yeah, and not just talk about Obsidian, because Obsidian is great, but when you look at the academia world, um, Zotero, the amount of questions I get looks like, how do you use Zotero with Obsidian? Well, I, I clip stuff to Zotero, but there's also a workflow that I have using Zotero integrations, not the citations plugin or the annotations plugin. Um, so it's like specific use cases, which in a, like a general newsletter doesn't quite work. And then also how do you incorporate- Why doesn't it? No, it's in like Eleanor's roundup type Oh, right, style. if you were to mimic the style, yeah. Yeah, that style newsletter doesn't quite work. So I was like, I want to do a, it's not an Obsidian community, but a lot of the posts will be Obsidian related, but like yeah. a, an extended brain discussion letter. I don't know how you call it, but yeah, a newsletter that's around the extended brain. I guess you'd call it community now um, with things like Elicit, Zotero, Mendeley in there as well. Obsidian, obviously, and bringing up tools like Tana, like notion like Rome and making those comparisons or not different ideas that are going on in the developer world the sort of really niche nuanced workflow conversations kind of like what we have here but even more in in a newsletter form and it, it won't mm. be like hey here's what happened this week because it's gonna be way too effing much for a newsletter um but because I mean it will Okay, I'll, I'll give you a little bit, little bit of context for how much I spend in the forums. There are like around 20, like 15 to 25 conversations I have in the Obsidian Discord forum that could easily go into a newsletter. Mm -hmm. Then I have three or four inside of our, like inside of my Discord in the internet, uh, or oh, I renamed it to the Extended Brain Server. Uh, and then on YouTube, I get like over a hundred comments a week where I'm like, this is really useful and other people may want to know about this. It's kind of like a tip that I've given someone because they've asked me a question, but I can't do a video on a tip. It would have to be a short. So I feel like all those sorts of things can go into the newsletter, but that would be like over a hundred things in a newsletter. And I don't think people have the attention span to read over a hundred things. <laughs> I think it depends on your audience. True. I think grouping them into grouping them would things work make, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like there are themes of questions that I get on YouTube. 
that I think I could put into an email's newsletter and kind of like as the email marketing person that you are, because you know more than me, um, I was thinking like the better tips, tricks, hacks, whatever content could go into a, I don't know what it's called, a drip sequence. Don't know what the term is. I think it's a sequence. Automated sequence, yeah. That's the one. When people first like yes. subscribe to the newsletter because yeah, I don't want to have that, to you could actually the same thing. have so when people join you would have a welcome sequence. So people come in where you would share your philosophy, like and then what I could imagine for you is like as you're sharing your philosophy, you could include little kind of call out blocks of little tips and tricks that help and support that based on a YouTube comment that you've had. So you could trickle them through. I mean, you could have a tip of the day whenever you could, one, you could create a tip of the day, but basically you take all of the tips and people subscribe and join that list to get those tips. So you would be able to pre-schedule if you wanted to 12 months of tips from just one day. If you've spoken to so many people, you could actually like batch that and create an entire like I actually have one I have a wait li- I have one on my own thing where people can click and join and they just get a bunch of tips right things that I've the, thought about the things with you like when when I've had conversations with you you're like oh I didn't know you could do that oh I didn't know you could do that like yes. I have those conversations all the time and it's like they're yeah. really small things that I know because I'm in the app like eight hours a day <laughs> but people that aren't don't know those things and they're not like oh I didn't know that opt-in it what? Oh, I didn't know that opt-in. Ah, uh, yeah. I like that. <laughs> Basically, it's a daily email where you send little... You could actually set it up as a daily email and send it every day. Kind of an evolved form of what you did with your blog. Mm. Where it's literally either one to three quick, short tips that you've had in conversations that you think will be useful and valuable to share. And then you could, if you speak to that many people every single day, you could share these little nuanced context pieces Mm -hmm. and then map that into like bigger, longer stuff, but have it as a, as a, like, this is a daily email. Every single day I send you stuff that I've been talking about today. Now you can obviously, no one can hear this, but you could batch that. So let's say you get five or six different things. You've literally got a week in one day. So you'd have seven days worth of like content in one day. And every day you have another 14 and you just put it in a list and get it together. Why am I not doing that for fuck's sake? See, I come up with the ideas and then you steal them. Oh wait, no, it's the other way around, isn't it? <laughs> but, no, no these, but, the, the, but, the... but this is the thing that you can do. I mean, I have done something of that form. I did the nerdy notebook which is something that I have when people refer two or three people, they get access to the nerdy notebook, um, oh. which has that. So that's something you can do. Yeah. Cause what I also had in my head is obviously some people are going to join at different points. So I could probably have some tips that I can recycle. Cause oh, obviously, God, yeah. you, cause, you would cause I get the same, as, I get the yeah, same it's questions. It's an evergreen sometimes. newsletter. It's evergreen. It never ends. And yeah. then you could have, you could send it live as a broadcast and then add it into a, newsletter sequence where it's hidden just take out the co- the day context and then it gets sent out it's very simple to do and you're in convert kit right yeah i'm on the free plan at the moment because i don't do anything yeah you would have <laughs> to upgrade to the paid plan yeah. to do the automation stuff but yeah and and you could also well, my brain's just got i love email, i love the email marketing stuff which is why i, I know that's why i asked <laughs> And this is why I said to record this, because let's be honest, you talk most of the time, but this is my stuff. I love this stuff. Like, <laughs> let me go. Let's go. You could have people opt into specific apps. So when they join, they could say what tools they want to hear about. And then there could be at least one spe- app specific for the tools that they use. So for Rome users, here's a Rome tip that I saw. For Obsidian, for uh, don't use don't use Rome, use Obsidian. <laughs> sorry, actually, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I can't wait for the Tanner conversation because I I looked at it and was like, I'm gonna have a look, but I don't like it. And yeah, anyway, pin. I was yeah. gonna say like post-it note that. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, um, in terms of the email marketing, you can have it so people can opt in to what they want to hear about. If they want just a roundup, they can have the roundup. And what's really cool is you could basically just take the roundup of things that you've created and put it in a newsletter to be really, here are three pieces that I sent in the roundup this week. This one, this one, this one. Click on it, go. Boom, done. That's literally what I had in my head. <laughs> yeah, so you would so be you able to have, a, have like... A roundup like sum a... summary. Yeah. And just take yeah, the, and the most popular ones from the last week. Yes. And you can see what, which ones were popular because you can have a little voting thing. So they tick the ones that are popular and then you would have all these lovely little fancy things that tell you which ones were the most popular. And yeah, there's a lot you could do. Yeah. yeah I, I, I can see it now. Just the effort I have to put in. <laughs> or you just hire someone to do it for you. No, I want to do it because I want to understand what's going on. No, I'm, I'm, I, 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 could, I, I, I predict we're going to have a number of calls next week. <laughs> John. <laughs> Potentially. John. What, no, we'll, we'll, we'll just do what I what what I did to help you out with Obsidian. You, you just asked me, oh, can you can you show me how to do that thing? Oh yeah, here's the setup. <laughs> yeah, obviously. So yeah, we should right. record that as well, actually. Could do. Because I think it's we, we we should actually genuinely record it as a video and just put it on the channel. Bonus. Yeah. Bonus. Mm. yeah well on the, on the second channel i'm doing all the cody stuff and the development stuff it's it's funny i got a question saying oh have you stopped developing the plugin i'm like no i just got to a point where i was like i don't understand any of this so i'm gonna stop developing the plugin and actually understand what i'm writing before <laughs> I carry on and then i decided to get interested in a plugin that's far beyond my scope <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it yeah. right so Bit of context. I went to the Notion meetup. I know I'm, I'm a traitor uh, in London. <laughs> and I got there early because I got the earlier train to make sure that the train didn't get cancelled and I didn't miss it. <laughs> Cause... Yeah, that's the reason why I didn't go, because the trains. As I would have gone, I could have. Yeah, I, I, took, I took the one that... So I, I prefer walking around in London. I don't like going into the London Underground. It's just, if I could walk it, I'll do it. Um, So I did. And... Uh, I got there with, I gave myself like three hours to walk from London, Victoria to the place, but I walk faster than what Lon uh, than what Google Maps gives you. <laughs> so it says, oh, it's an hour 20 walk. I walked walked in 50 minutes. Um, so I had like two hours to waste, um, to use, not waste. And <laughs> I, I just researched Tana for two hours before the Notion conference, a uh, meetup. It wasn't really a conference, it was a meetup. And um because I'd, I'd seen it on Twitter, people had mentioned it in my comment section, and I was like, oh, what is this thing? And I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, looks like Remnote. And then they started with the views. I was like, okay, that's Notion-esque views in Remnote with LogSeq features. I didn't see Rome in there at all. I, I couldn't see Rome in the app at all. Might be because I don't understand Rome. <laughs> um but it, it literally looked like Remno with a couple of log, log seek features that looks like Notion. Yeah, and I like the idea, but yeah, I, I, think I, think... It's, I think it's another one of those. This is my potentially controversial hot takes. I think it's another one of those browser based notes apps. And I think Obsidian is out on its own. I don't think you can compare Obsidian to those apps. No. Because I, because I, I, I looked at it. I was like, oh, it's kind of cool, Notion plus that. But all I was doing in my head was going, well, look, I could just do that with Obsidian with this plugin. Okay, I could just do that with this with this plugin. Okay, I could do that. But why would I? Why? Like, it's not enough. I loved the idea, but what I didn't like is it's node based, so it's an outliner, which does not work for my own workflow. I cannot do it with an outliner. I don't know whether you can get rid of it. I didn't do enough research because it was like, okay, so everything's a node, which basically means it's an outliner and I've got to use it like an outliner. Well, that's never going to work for me. I'm going to have two big nodes because I write, because I use it for that too, because I write my ideas down and I process like typing it out when I'm doing a project, for example, it's not going to work for me because it's an outliner. So everything would be this massive, long, bloody task. And I'm like, ah, no. That's so why close. I, that's literally why I don't use LogSeq. And I know they have the option to not do that, but it's still classed as a node and it still looks like a node. It just doesn't have the dot at the start. And yeah. when, when I saw that, I was like, I'm not going to use this thing, but I want to learn about it. Yeah. And, and the reason, the reason I say Obsidian is not like those apps is when you look at the what obsidian is how it works how it functions there are so many core features to obsidian that those apps just don't have like 
local storage, security are obvious ones, but yeah. speed is another very important one. And then the fact that you can literally move anything, anywhere, anyway, customize it however you want, because it's on your system. You're not confined by the app developers, if that makes sense. Yeah. But I, I have my Excel finance spreadsheet inside of my Obsidian. Like I don't, I don't use my documents to open up, like to find and search for it. I just have it linked in my Obsidian page that says finances. That's one of the pages that's in my personal folder, not on publish. Um, <laughs> Obviously. Yes. Um. So I go control O to open up my quick switcher. F I N enter because finances appears. And then I push on the Excel link and it opens up my Excel spreadsheet. I did the same when I was writing the notion book, just had a Word document in there. And it's so easy. I can't do that at all in the cloud-based notes apps. So that's a feature I use in my, like, I would, I would say like normal day working, like people need to manage money. They need to use Word documents sometimes. I do that in Obsidian. You can't do that in those sorts of apps. It's just not possible. And I just hate browser-based apps. And I know, I am very aware for the developers out there that basically the apps that are downloadable are basically just Electron things with websites yeah. inside of them. I get that. But it's that tangibility of it being on my computer where I have no other distractions drawing my attention in. When I am in Obsidian, I am in Obsidian. When I am in Notion, I am in Notion. And that, like, compartmentalizing is really valuable to stop me from getting pulled in different directions because I'm always getting loads of messages from clients and people needing my help or et cetera, et cetera. And I want to be able to just stay focused in what I'm doing. When I'm in Notion, I'm in Notion. When I'm in Obsidian, I'm in Obsidian. That is that. I'm not really in Notion very much anymore. When I open Notion, I remember when you first transitioned and you went back into Notion. I think it was for us, for yeah. the Notion nerds. And you were like, Oh, this is so slow. Oh, it's not that slow. What are you talking about? It's sped up recently. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I opened it to create like a really dirty sales page for a product that I'm launching. And I, I, I was just like, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I, I, I would be done now. It's like, I've already pushed the button. Load it already. I've, pushed it. I've pasted. Why aren't you pasting? Come on. Quickly. Quickly. I want to publish this, get it out there. And I was constantly being blocked by the slowness of Notion. And yes, whatever, it's been improved, but it's still Obsidian slower than is Obsidian. local files. Obsidian is local files. It just it just wins. And now with the collaborative sync, it wins even more. Still not perfect yet. I know. I hope that we can get the kind of VS Code-esque thing that we spoke about the other day. Because yeah. if we can, that would be it. Notion would lose. Oh yeah. So context for everyone listening the i i i'll rewind a little bit i was having a conversation on twitter about tana because i was like people using tana why i don't get it and most people that have moved to tana have either gone from logseek rome or notion i didn't find anyone that moved from obsidian to tana i found a lot of people interested in tana from obsidian but they didn't move because of loads of different features some of it syntax some of it local some of it speed some of it actual features that Tana just doesn't have yet, um, but no one moved from Obsidian. And one of the conversations that I had was really good, but I've forgotten it. So I'm going to move on. <laughs> Talk about the plugin until it comes back to my head. Um, yeah, no, that just completely like I have the tweet in my head, but I can't I can't read any of the words. It's just bloop, gone. Fun, fun. Yeah. Oh no, that was it. So Obsidian. I, I responded to this conversation. I said, Obsidian is more like VS Code than it is like Rome Logseek on Notion. It is as well. And even though VS Code doesn't have backlinks, it doesn't like backlinks don't exist because it is mm. literally just written code. They are blocks. You can't click it and then go. Uh, you have to set up an actual link, which is the same you do in Evernote. Um, but all the other features, <laughs> yeah, all the other features of Obsidian, you can see in VS Code, you've got the different tabs, you've got the different panes, you can open up multiple terminals in VS Code, which is the same as open up multiple pages in Obsidian, uh, you've got the side panel in the left in VS Code, in Obsidian, you've got them on both sides, but then you've got the extensions, which is the community plugins, and there are loads of extensions in VS Code, so loads, mm, of, extensions. loads of extensions in Obsidian, exactly. yeah, you're, you, you got a point there. 
the status bar at the bottom of VS Code, <laughs> status bar at the bottom of Obsidian. It's Obsidian is literally like a a link friendly, nicer looking version of VS Code for people that don't know code, but you can yeah. still do code in there. I I think I really do love like I actually like VS Code too. Whenever I'm doing like snippet stuff for convert kit i use vs code because it's just it's delightful and simple and easy to use it's the most popular code editor ide yeah it's really good and i can see exactly what you're saying <laughs> i'm just looking up sitting going yeah no that is very vs Code-y and with the autocomplete that's very very i love the autocomplete in vs code like i don't have to think as much and yes it's lazy but i don't care <laughs> everyone <laughs> everyone uses it it's delightful i love it and yeah i just since moving to Obsidian, I have now realized which which move are you saying the first move or when we reorganized your vault? When when reorganizing the vault. Okay. I was gonna say yeah. the first move you were still going in and out. So I Yeah, you... I'm I'm not going in and out anymore. When I have something that I need to capture, I'm going straight to my daily page and then capturing if I, it's not already open. Like I am in Obsidian. I literally what used to be a notion, I'm I'm doing a number of projects at the moment to do with summits that I'm appearing at and lots of different pieces I set everything up it wasn't even a question of where I'm going to put it it was in obsidian I was like okay you know uh control p project put that in let's go off we go let's go and it was just so quick that I didn't have to think about it anymore and that's even with me still trying to like I'm still tweaking my system to fit me because I had your base, but now I'm changing things and adding things and adapting things. Like I now have a the project inbox that you have. I have seven days, not three. Yeah. And it's just like small little tweaks that I've made that fit my brain. And it's now just like, yep, this is just possible. I don't have to think, is it possible? Yeah. Because it just is. <laughs> like it but, is yes. possible. That's it. It's like Yes, unless you want to do audio, then it just sucks, as you've been sharing. <laughs> oh, you're talking about plugins, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, right, it works, and I've got it to work. I've got I've got a door sound effect, because it's the first one that came off my epidemic sound when I was looking. But yeah, I have a door sound effect now that I can play inside of Obsidian. Um, and when when I start fiddling around with the plugin, I reckon I... I don't think I'll be able to get it where people can add their own audio in easily because everything needs to be hard coded into the JS um, document. But what I can do is have audio already hard coded into the plugin for a theme, or you can have a drop down of different audios. So door sound effect. I don't know why you'd want a door sound effect, but yeah. Um, or you could have like, because I exactly. I know the old PS2 theme was suggested in uh, in, in my server. Uh, so like, you could have the PlayStation 2 sound effects for movements inside of Obsidian, and you'd be like, I want that environment. It's not a theme, but that environment. In Imagine the if you combine the two. Oh, a, a CSS with the. That'd be cool. So you have PlayStation 2 on your Obsidian. <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's doable. It's just harder. Like the the hardest thing about putting the sound in was knowing that so this is going to be like development specific, so everyone else will zone out for a second. Um, but in order to yeah, in order to get the plugin to work, it has to be a a, a JS file, a JavaScript file, and we're writing in TypeScript. So you need to compile the TypeScript to JavaScript, Ooh, right? Funny. Which is which is fine because you use npm, but you need to use uh, a config a config file. So <laughs> most people use ES build to configure TypeScript to JavaScript, but the configuration of ES build doesn't have certain dependencies that you need to compile sound. So you needed to use a different compiler. But I didn't know that. So everyone that's saying, oh, yeah, I have an ES build. I have an ES build. I have it. Yeah, but it doesn't work for me. And I don't know why. And then I spoke with a developer and he was like, yeah, ES build doesn't work. Oh, that's why it's not working. <laughs> so like the whole, the whole day of me troubleshooting it. And he's just like, yeah, no, it doesn't work. Great. Uh, so I needed rollup.config. I needed a, a rollup config instead. And then, and then it worked. 
but I was also using like import stuff from elsewhere. So it's it gets very complicated. It makes sense when you've done it. Yeah. But when you're trying to troubleshoot, you're like, why isn't this working? Um, but yeah. And, and that right there is why I don't think I would ever do it myself. But this, right, this is what I had in my head. And I was like, I'm just going to develop some stuff. And now I'm in the development world as like a, a learner. I'm not competent. I'm a learner. Uh, <laughs> there are, I am seeing so many things I could do or I could change or I could add. And I've seen it in the um, plugin dev uh, channel, but they've suggested to put plugin developers as like a consultancy, like the equivalent of a Notion consultant, but be a plugin dev. So if someone wants something in Obsidian, you go to a plugin dev and then they make it for you. And I was like, that's cool. I like that idea. I can't do it, but I like that idea. Um, and I was thinking, what other app? can even have that possibility because there's, there's not many other apps that have community plugins that are that easily oh, customizable yeah i know logseek's are open source but from my understanding from a developer's perspective logseek is quite challenging because it's so open source things change a lot and you have to keep track of everything a lot um Whereas Obsidian doesn't change that frequently and plugins don't need updating that much unless it's Never like... Never a... you say uh, Obsidian doesn't update that frequently. Considering from, a, Obsidian... from like a development perspective. Yeah. They're very developer friendly, it seems. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're developer friendly if you're a developer. If you want to become a developer, good effing luck at the moment. <laughs> like, I, I know there are some... There is some documentation. I won't put an adjective in front of it um, for developers. But like I say, it's for developers. Yeah. So if you're a newbie developer and you want to learn stuff, you're fucked. Which yeah. is my experience of the entire world. Like yeah. I understood most of the concepts you were talking about. I understand it from a conceptual standpoint, from a knowledge. Pseudo code. I, I know what it is. I know what you're talking about. I know how to do it. But how do I combine these things that I know into something that I want? And that is the reason why I've never continued. And I've been trying to study code for ages, but there is always a stopping point for me of like, okay, so I know what this is. I know what a variable is. I know what an if loop is. I know what a case loop is. And I know, I know how to compile. I know what that is. I know the commands but how do I take this random bunch of segmented things and turn it into something that I want to create? I don't want to just create what everybody else is creating. I don't want to do a hello world thing or a calculator of this sort. Or that. I, I, no, I don't care about all of those things. I'm not going to learn anything by doing that because you're. I'm just looking at your code and going, oh, uh, 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 uh. I'm not able to translate that. And that is why I can't code or, or why I refuse to code. Yeah. Like why I stop myself short but of that. The learning gap is like getting started with code requires like a month of pain because yes. all the documentation is for people that can program and develop and know the terms. There is very little program friendly documentation. And there's a good reason for it because you need to get the terms right. It's the same as academia. You need to know what a repository is. Um, and my So inside of Obsidian is where I take my notes. I have a page called coding, and that's where I have my notes. Like I'm doing the CS50 course from, I think it's Harvard. Um, and I've done like the first lecture in three weeks because I have other stuff I got to do. But I've done the first lecture and it's in C, which I don't like the language. I understand the concepts he's talking about. But when I actually went to go and do the thing, I was stuck with so many things. I was like, why doesn't this just work like it does on yours? And I realized that they're using what's called a code base. Uh, yeah, a, a code space. And I was in a workspace inside of VS Code. And I didn't realize that those code spaces existed. Exactly. A code space is a space that has certain plugins installed or extensions installed that allow you to add certain commands. And there is a CS50 extension 
for VS Code that allows you to use C and C++ commands in the terminal. And I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> exactly. That right there. That right there is the limitation. And it's very well and good people going, well, just keep going. It's like, well, why? It's just frustrating. But why? Like, I don't want it that much. <laughs> I think to become a programmer, you really need either a lot of time um, and motivation to get started and really get past that big, it's not even a hurdle. It's like five hurdles that you got to like run through and like a not, not let them crush you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, or have a mentor that is patient enough because what I found with developers is they just, they go forwards in their head and they can leave you behind sometimes when they're talking, which I recognize I do a lot when I'm here. But when I'm actually talking one to one with someone, I know how to coach. Um, but the developers from what I've experienced, they're great. They're really helpful. But they talk as if I know I, I know what they're talking about. Just the same as the documentation. I'm like, take 10 steps back. I didn't understand the first word that you said there. I was talking to Bass yesterday about this plugin that I'm thinking of developing, which is where we got onto this, which is live share. And he was like, oh yeah, you need to network this and use a peer to peer connection with that. Or you could do this. I'm like, hold up a second. What the F is network and how does it work in code? Like I know what a network is. I know you can connect one person to another, but how does it actually look on a back end? Is it just a equals B? Obviously not. <laughs> it's like, how do you do that? Is it a variable? Do you need a link? Like, what wh what does it mean? Like, yeah, and it was it was just very complicated. So, yeah, live share, which is how we got onto this, is essentially Google Docs, but in VS Code. And I and I want that in Obsidian. Yeah, I want that in Obsidian. <laughs> Uh, for for those that haven't used VS Code, uh, and uh, because Notion. it is Notion, yeah, it is like Notion, but it's it's different because like I was working with Bass yesterday. Notion, there is a small delay on working, but inside VS Code, there is a button in the status bar because Bass was navigating all over the place. He knew where he was going. I was like, Bass, I can't follow you. So you know what I did? I pushed follow Bass. And I and he just followed him because you can yeah hit <laughs> your face. He didn't know you could do that. And and it just followed him. So I, I just took my hat off the keyboard. I was like, Bass, explain what's going on. And he highlighted, I could see what he highlighted because it went his color. When he typed something, I saw what he typed. When he wanted to add something to chat, he added it to the chat that comes up with the live share session. Um, and then he saved the document, he compiled the document, and then I could see it in my obsidian. And like he did all of that. I didn't have to touch anything. But I could see exactly what he was doing. It was kind of like a, he has control of my system. But the big thing is he uses Vim to code. I don't. He was using Vim in his code space, but on my documents. I couldn't see Vim. I couldn't activate Vim. But he could, and he did. Oh, that's so, kind of cool. So you can have your plugins and use your stuff. You could use a quick ad. You could use your button that you put on a page because you can't remember a hotkey. Um, but I'm like, I don't want any of that. You do that. You could have Vim in your Obsidian open. I don't. You use Vim to navigate. I don't. That's how Live Share works in VS. And if you do that in Obsidian, it's quite literally a live by live sync, like letter by letter sync. You have your thing. I have my thing, we work. Developers that's listening, if you're interested, I'm quite happy to organize and front up the, the prog project, but I'm not helping you code it because I ain't got a fucking clue. And yes, I'm going to swear, I have not got a fucking clue where to start. I can pseudo code it, which is what Bass and I did. But the actual development behind it, not a Scooby-Doo. What is pseudo coding it? Writing it in English. So uh, when when you pseudocode something, it's basically writing whatever it is in English. So um, when when I activate live session, disable sync. Uh, when we open up the page, sync by line, sync by uh, row. So sync by row, then sync by column, 
English code, basically. Yeah. Fair enough. If they type at the same time, take this one, not that one. Yeah. You you literally just write out in English in like a page and then you figure out how to do it. Because one of those lines could actually be like 20 lines of code, but you won't know that until you get into it. And then you have to debug all of the issues that can appear. Like I didn't even consider this, but Bass was saying, well, when someone undoes something, if you push undo, does the code undo your last action or my last action? Because obviously it's it's a synced page. So you would expect it to be undo your last action, which means the code needs to keep track of who made what change and needs to go back in the change log of your changes rather than the general changes, which also means you have to have an account login. So whoever makes the change, there is a, a essentially a Git change, which is why in VS Code they use GitHub or Microsoft because then they have a user for each change that's made. So when you push an undo button, they can undo yeah. your change rather than every change. Makes and sense. then when the live share is stopped, the collaborative sync then needs to become active. And in theory, because the live share has synced both pages, it shouldn't matter which sync it's taken because the page should be the same. But if it isn't, it needs to be able to know what's going on. And if someone disconnects, okay. there's so many different moving pieces that you've got to think about. Exactly. And if someone does disconnect, where do you pick them up? Do you pick them up on their last instance? On the new instance, do they need to add, okay, yes, I want the new instances or not? H how does that happen? Um, but yeah, M uh, MVP, a minimal viable product, is literally just get two people on a page that can type in the same sort of lines together. And then... Yeah, because think... right now in Collaborative Think, you can't, it, it won't let you do that. Yeah, if you, try and, if you try and type at the same time, the person that finished last will be the most recent update and whoever yeah. started typing like whoever finished first whatever they wrote will be gone it'll just be overwritten because the sync is page by page not line by line yeah so yeah the, the first step is literally line by line sync and i mean we can call it we can call the extension the exact same in vs code because it's in obsidian so it could be live share that's something that i've noticed going through all of these plugins i've gone through 230 now of the 670 that's there the naming is shit. If you're searching for something of a plugin, anything that isn't in like the top 30 plugins, the naming is so bad. That's why they're not in the top 30 of plugins. Exactly. Like completer that's spelt wrong. The, now you know about it, it makes sense. Yeah. But why not autocorrect or auto suggest? That, that's what yeah, I typed if in I'd to learn about it. that, I would have installed that far, far, far earlier. Yeah, and I'm like, why completer misspelt? I don't get it. And like, there's Notion like tables is a plugin that is way better than advanced tables, like way better. But it's Notion like tables, yeah. and it's got like seven thousand downloads. And advanced tables is like right at the top, and advanced tables sucks. Like in comparison, it's a good plugin for those that use tables and don't like the default tables but when you use the advanced tables it bumps things over and makes the columns the right size i'm like yep cool great um and then when you push enter it adds the next line cool great notion like tables does that but you can move things move columns left and right with a button you can change the type of the column like in notion so like i understand where the name comes from but unless you know Notion, which not everyone does, and unless you're looking for Notion-like tables, which not everyone is looking for, they won't find it. Is that the one that you've shared previously? Have, no. have they, have they... no, that's that, something else. That's that's DB folder. <laughs> is Notion-like <laughs> tables good? For tables, yeah. If, if you use tables inside of your Obsidian, like... Just tables, not databases, tables. Yes. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I want tables. I basically, if I could have, if I could have Tana without the outliner, I would be happy. <laughs> That's, but Tana is the outliner. Yeah, I hate outlining. I just want, <laughs> I just, I just want the functionality of what it does in Obsidian, which someone could create, and that's the thing. If someone creates it, then I'm, I don't need 
and it's not enough of a thing that I want to move and migrate an entire system again. So, in in my head, what people see and like about things like Tana, Logseek, Rome stuff is the inline database features. Yes. Because Obsidian, the database features are there, they're just not in line of the page. Yeah. I like I like the 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 ability to have multiple types of views. So I sort of get most of that with data view, mm. but I want to be able to have like in line a little bit easier than me having to go in and figure out bloody <laughs> data view. <laughs> I, I don't know whether you saw, but there was a community talk with the developer yes. of DataView. Um, uh, yeah, because I linked it in the Discord and I was like, make sure you look at this if you use Discord, if you use DataView. Um, but he was saying that he, making a, a GUI, so basically a, a user-friendly version of DataView where you push buttons yeah. rather than type stuff out. It was the thing he regretted most of all, yeah. Yeah. Um, and what I can see happening in the future at some point is, because I know people are working on it, um on like the backside uh sort of testing around but what i see like the db folder is a perfect example of the plugin where they're using the data view queries in a more friendly format like db folder has solved all of its bugs that irritated me and now i'm like yeah like all all of the issues that i was having have now been fixed i still don't understand the formula property <laughs> <laughs> um but that that's a, that's another thing but the sorts the sorts now work seamlessly the starred panel again works seamlessly the tasks used from the data view query work seamlessly like you tick a task off it's gone it's done um and yeah it's literally a notion database there and they now have grouping filters as well so you can group yeah you can group filters inside of the database so it's but it's full page still am i right yeah yeah you you can embed it, but it's a transclusion of a page and it doesn't look nice. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, with Obsidian, if you want multiple views, multiple pages. Yeah, that that's exactly the point, because which is what I'm kind of doing. That's mm -hmm. intriguing. I might go and have it because I I hated it. It looked really like messy, mm -hmm. which well, is the thing that was put me off. Yeah, he hadn't updated the CSS to the new minimal theme. So the CSS style of the plugin was still suited to the last one. So it was trying to find some um, divs, some sections of Obsidian that either no longer existed or had been moved and changed. Uh, so that's why the boxes were like skew if and stuff. I, and Nicole recently did a video about data view, real life use or something like that. I don't know. I skipped all the data view stuff because it was boring. Um, no, no offense, Nicole. It's just, I know how to do it. And it's like, yeah, I'll skip that. Um, but she had DB folder as the second part. And it's like, oh, I'll have a look. Um, and I don't think she did it justice. She showed it and it and it worked. But the limitations that she found, I personally don't have. So I was like, I don't know whether that's a her workspace issue, a her CSS issue, um, or a her computer issue. I don't know. I doubt it's a computer because she's a programmer. So it's probably good. <laughs> um but the speed issue she was having with adding a page, I don't have. The mm -hmm. visual issue that she had, I don't have. So as a as a researcher in me, I'm like, you should have done your research before you shared that. But I understand why she shared it in the video. It's just from a plugin developer perspective, like I'm putting like my Raphael hat on now. That would really piss me off because <laughs> that YouTube video is going to be up for potentially a year. And if people see, oh, data view is better than DB folder because of the video, like if that video pops off and does well and gets like 200,000 views, people are going to see that DB folder has a bug and that bug might be fixed tomorrow. And that's why I'm really careful about sharing plugins and bugs and stuff uh, in videos. So it's, it's one of those where I'm like, I don't think she did it justice because she shared it and then said a bug. But she didn't say, like, this is the potential. Like, this is what this could be. And I think it's massive. And she thinks it's massive. But it was like a comment right at the end of the video, which everyone knows YouTube. No one watches all the videos. No one gets the comments oh. at the end. Uh, so, yeah, I, I feel like it didn't do it justice. What are your thoughts? It's by Raphael GB, right? Because I think he might have renamed his plugin. No, it's still DV folder. 
oh, then I'm seeing something different then. Because I've just searched DB folder because I was intrigued and I can't find it. Yes, capital DB folder. I will check for updates. And nope, there's no plugin updates. Literally type in DB folder. I am. DB Ooh. folder. It's now I... called database folder. This plugin is a notion like database based on folders, links, tags, or data view queries. Interesting. Oh, so he's got different. This is what I mean. Like he's got different names for things. And that's that's just naming. Is that is that the same plugin? Yeah. Because oh. when when you when you look in so when you've downloaded it and in uh, well yeah once you've installed it's actually it actually said it actually called it db folder just then yeah when, when once you've installed it in the documentation on the on the obsidian side in like the community plugin section it's db folder and when you go to the community plugin section in the side panel it's db folder for database I assume yeah it's which, called db folder here but, but he's called it database folder which is great because it's actually better to fucking understand which is great I like that. But the problem is, me, looking at it, I'm like, oh, it's DB folder. You couldn't find it. That right there is a user issue. Yeah. Caused by the naming convention of the plugin developer. Yeah. It's, it's just so frustrating. Yeah. And they're, they're, oh, they're simple things. They're simple things that you can fix. But yeah. Um. So yeah, the um the whole app space, I think Obsidian in my eyes, could become, like, if Obsidian gets live share, uh, actually, I'll rephrase that, because I think it will happen. When Obsidian has live share, I think there will be a, I don't want to overemphasize this, but I think there could be a monopoly change. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, because as soon as you have live share inside of Obsidian, collaborative work becomes doable. And when you think about what happened with VS Code? VS Code was way down the bottom. It sucked. Then you had developers that started putting some effort into it. Yes, on Microsoft side, so they had loads of money to pay developers and stuff. But then VS Code got easier and simpler and extendable. Then you had Live Share. Then you had loads of other plugins as well because the plugin community in VS Code made it so customizable that any theme, any plugin, any extension, any code base, anything you wanted is there. There's so many hotkeys, there's so many buttons and tools you can push to make it yours that developers were like, you know what, I'm just going to go over there. And it's so easy for beginners as well to start with that you, I, I was watching one of those, you know, like time scale things of whatever's going on. It's like VS Code's down here. Everything else is moving, it's moving, it's moving. Then VS Code suddenly like bloop, 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 up top and then out front. <laughs> Within a year, VS Code went from like number 11 to number one. Mm. I and can't I, imagine using anything other than VS Code. And I don't code enough. Mm. But I couldn't imagine using anything else. But I, 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 I see that happening is, with Obsidian. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't know right now. I think if people understood and I think that was what that's what needs to change in the obsidian community. We're kind of in that little corner just having going <laughs> look at this. Um and I think that needs to change before it becomes almost mainstreamy. But Notion started out like that and I don't what would you want changed? Oh, uh, nothing in terms of actually obsidian changing, but I think like the understanding, like the marketing side of obsidian would need to shift. I think. <laughs> well, actually, there needs to be actual marketing. Um, let's put it really bluntly. I tell for a sec. Obsidian community is like fifty percent developers. No offense to developers, they suck at everything sales and marketing. I mean, I'm not even good at it, and I'm supposed to be good at it as a content creator. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, I... Look at Zotero! We are research. Oh, Zotero does my head in. I hate We that. are the research assessment. Yeah, but you don't do research. Like, you also do everything else. Your marketing could be widespread, but you're not. You could be Readwise. And you yes. are Readwise for me. <laughs> yeah, me too now. Still haven't figured out... Um... Apart from one thing, but that's beside the point. But yeah, so I, I do I do agree with you. And something that I, I saw in VS Code that I it didn't like click in my head, 
but they could do it in Obsidian because I, I don't know if you're familiar, the release notes of all the updates are now a page inside of Obsidian you can find. That would, I think they've actually started doing that. Yeah, I know. No, that's what I said. I didn't know if you do that, knew that. Um, <clears throat> but inside of VS Code, when you open up VS Code, there is the start here page, the help here page, <clears throat> where mm. it... Well, yeah. I, I, so when you open it up, when you've installed an extension, it brings up an extension help like progress bar that takes you through like the beginning steps of doing it. And then when you open up VS code, obviously you've got the beginning steps of VS code, make a project. This is how you do this, do this. And there's loads of like help buttons to push you when you open up Obsidian. And I think Obsidian could do something similar with their onboarding to VS code because it's not a page on their system. Yes, it does require the internet, which obviously Obsidian is an internet focus, but you don't need it. Um, but it, it means that if people open up a scene for the first time, it can open up to that, excuse me, that sort of help queue, that help onboarding. So they can push the button and be like, oh, this is how you make a page. This is how you make a folder. This is how you sort stuff. So the community don't have to do the beginning stuff over and over and over again, because that's the most painful part of being in a community is answering the same beginner questions repeatedly, which, yeah. is, which is why they have the Obsidian uh, help forum like the obsidian hub i mean it's useful but not um <laughs> so yeah it's a bit of both but i think if obsidian if the obsidian team managed to do something like vs code with the sort of helps a page the starter page that would again like the onboarding then becomes easier as soon as the onboarding becomes easier like loads of people are going to jump jump ship from wherever they are because it's like brain has just gone this way so i'm gonna follow it like i am currently launching my own little thing around task management based on kind of the way that my brain works we were speaking about it before and so i was like okay well i can do an up there's the there's the program itself where i'm explaining the whole process with no platforms no apps because it's completely platform agnostic yes hallelujah um and then i'm like okay well i could actually create a bunch of systems in different apps because of how agnostic it is it would work anywhere and then i'm like okay let's go make it in notion and then i go into notion to start making it. and i have the knowledge of notion i've done it for years and been in there and i'm in there i'm like this would be so much easier in obsidian <laughs> i'm just like going this would be quicker in obsidian this would be quicker in obsidian i need to launch something that's like this in obsidian because this would be so much easier in obsidian and i'm just like i'm looking at it going this is so annoying <laughs> Because I I am limit I am so much more limited in what I can do in Notion now, mm. and I think with Obsidian, be, if Obsidian could become quote unquote as mainstream as Notion, there would be so much power in it. I the 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 thing that I think push pushes Notion to mainstream one is obviously the YouTube marketing their communities drastically helped them. Two was their aesthetic, which Obsidian, I think, have like solved. Uh, uh, the default theme, you don't need a theme. It, it's solved. No. Um, so I don't think Obsidian are behind there. Obsidian needs some bigger creators in a, uh, in the YouTube space. Um, I'm working on Ali, for those listening. I'm working on him. Um, we, we got it working, and then he decided to duplicate. Right, right. Th this is what he did, okay? Sorry, Ali, I'm calling you out. <laughs> he, used, he used Rome. I set him up on Obsidian. Similar way to you, I didn't have the tasks in there. Um, kind of like my before extended brain template. So I set him up and I said to him, do you want to import your Roam vault or not? I would suggest no, because it's going to bloat your vault out. He said, oh no, do it. So he did it. And do you know what he did? He duplicated all the files by accident. And then and then obviously it becomes a hassle. And you, when you don't understand Obsidian, it becomes like this pain point. And then he drops Obsidian. And now he's using Scrivener for writing, Apple Notes for notes, and using his Rome research notes in the past. So he's using three different tools to write his book. And I think he's using Word or Google Docs um, to share information with like his editor as well. So there's like four tools there. And that could all be done on Obsidian. Oh. And I'm like, ah! But yeah, as soon as you get like someone, a bigger creator talking about Obsidian, um, or in a or a video channel, something on YouTube that pushes into mainstream, Obsidian's going to struggle 
to get the marketing because they they don't market. They're not interested in marketing, which is why I love the development team. They are, yeah. we are going to make this app as good as we can. They don't push updates for the sake of it. They push for speed and performance I, and help. I hope that something that they eventually hire is someone on marketing. Hey, um, <laughs> you know, it would be good to have someone in the marketing because there is so much that is not like I saw Obsidian as something that I would never be able to use. It wouldn't fit for my brain. And now I'm in it. And now I've actually been able to move past things. I'm just like, oh, this is exactly what I need because it is exactly how I work and I can make it how I want it to look. So funny story at the notion at meetup. Uh, I, I got speaking with a couple of people. So I met with Taha. Um, I spoke with Ali quite a bit or well, towards the end. But when I was speaking to Taha, there were a couple of people there that also watched Answers in Progress, the YouTube channel. Um, and Taha went off to work with the microphone that wasn't working for the Notion people that were there. Um, technical issues. <laughs> uh, and they asked they asked me, oh, how am I using Notion? I said, I'm not. And they were like, what? I said, I use Obsidian. They said, what's Obsidian? And I was like, damn, you're at a Notion event and you're asking me what Obsidian is. I need to be careful here. <laughs> um, and I, I showed them because, so Ali made a joke at the beginning of his talk that he made, it wasn't a real, like it wasn't real that his Notion wasn't loading for his notes for the presentation, but it's something that people can relate to. So I said, oh, you know, Ali made the joke at the beginning about Notion not loading. He said, yeah, well, have you got Notion on your phone? And he did. So he tried to bring up Notion and I tried to bring up Obsidian. Which one came up first? <laughs> I, I pushed the button. Like I admittedly, I, I did already have it synced. Um, so it didn't have to sync all of my files. But if I was offline, it wouldn't have had to sync anyway. I pushed the button and it came up and his Notion thing was still spinning. And then I scrolled through my notes like of, of the, the, the meetup and then I went to a different page and then the notion loaded. And he was like, wow, that's quick. What server is that stored on? My phone. How? Because it's local. And I went and explained this thing and they're like, so can you do this in Obsidian? Yes. But you can't do this in Obsidian. Yes, you can. You do this. Well, how do you do it? Oh, you do that. Can you do? Yes, you can. Why haven't I heard of Obsidian? Because uh, you, you haven't gone down the rabbit hole on YouTube yet. <laughs> um, and, and also, to be, and uh, not to call out any Obsidian crit, well, yeah, I am calling you out. It's all shit. <laughs> like, until you're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, <laughs> then, <laughs> and I will say, you are like the only exception because actually your video started me getting in there. Okay. And it wasn't until I started seeing your space and actually the real life, this is how I use it, this is why I use it, that it became possible and feasible for me. Maybe I should put an Obsidian template in there as well. I think I might. Anyway, You sorry. still need to do your community edition for me. I will, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's actually funny. When, when I watch... So, I'll rewind a second. When I'm learning about code, I watch YouTube because I want to understand the environment, the context that I'm in. Environmental learning is something that I want to do. A, oh, wait, it's actually a book I want to write about, but I was speaking with Ali. That might be Ali's second book because we spoke about ecological psychology and he'd never heard of it. And he was like, oh, that's my second book. And anyway, side tangent. Um, so when I'm learning about code on YouTube, there's this channel that I watch that is, it's fast. I don't think it's fast, but I think it's fast for the most users because I see the comment section like, you speak too quickly. I'm like, no, he doesn't. I'm watching it times two and I'm like, come on. Uh, but he's using memes to make fun of certain things. I can't remember the channel's name. It's like Firelight or Fire Lead, something like that. It's, it's code specific. It's got like two million subs. So it's, it's a big channel. Um, and he makes sort of like fun, meme -y, comments about javascript and typescript and he talks about code he talks about how it works and how it like develops and stuff but he brings like fun elements to it and it's literally straight to the point there's no hi i'm doing this today or we're going to talk about that it's some ran i mean it's very memey you, you don't see his face but it's some random thing that pops up in your face it's like did you know this this or this no i didn't and it's just straight in or 
we're going to go down the rabbit hole of this thing. And it's like a meme with like the fire door and the, the space door and you're like going into the fire thing. Like that's that meme. And it's crudely edited, but it's a deliberate style. It's fun, engaging and educational, which is exactly what you want. When I watch Obsidian videos, there is always, <laughs> always at least 30 seconds at the beginning. That I'm like, tap, tap, tap my arrow key to get rid of it because I don't care. Um, I used to do that in my Notion videos. I stopped doing it because people just don't care. I looked at my view graph and it's just boom, it's like straight down. Um, so I just get straight into the content, which does make my video shorter. So I don't get as much money because of ads, but meh, I'd much rather it be a, a good video. And then in the video, there are just, there are bits that I don't think are needed. I cut it out of my videos. And when I watch other people's videos, I'm like, this could be so much shorter. Like when they're searching for something, I know how to search. <laughs> That's a basic thing. I don't need to see you search it. I don't need to see you type it out. I don't need to hear your thought process in how you're typing out the different things. I just want to see what you've done. You briefly explain what you've done and then do the next thing. But I yeah. want it I want it to be a step by step. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. You could do this, this or this and then explain this, this, this and then move on to the next thing. And something I've done with my database introduction video, which is coming out monday i scheduled it monday i think yeah. um is i've got a list view a table view and a task view query view the three in a source page and then a preview page on the other side so yeah. i have maximum information in their face like if they want to know what the query looks like for list task or table they can see it and i can just do there's the from there's the where there's the sort and it's just quick and it's like the video's eight minutes, just it's like eight minutes, one second. So I've just hit the, you can have mid roll ads. I didn't plan it. It just happened to be, I was like, Oof, that was close. Um, but it's eight minutes. And when I look at the other data view, like introduction videos, Nicole's is 16 minutes and a half. And I then... can't, I can't, I want it now. Tell me what to do. That's what I love with your videos. I look at your videos now, like they're short, good, go. I want to know, and then I can go. That's what I want now. Yeah. And, and that's where my videos are going. But like Nicole's video is like 16 and a half minutes. Then the next video is, I can't pronounce his name, um, but his video is like half an hour long. It's like 32 minutes. And then you've got the Obsidian Talks, which are like hour 20 and then hour 40. And if I'm in the mood for that, I'll go for it. But I'm not. And that's the thing. But new newbies. We're talking about newbies. I want to get an introduction to data view. I'm going to sit and watch an hour and 40 of some developer talking about data view and use terms that I don't understand. Like I understand data view and I, I'm going through, I'm like, Oh wait, why are you using argument there? Why are you using a variable there? Because he's using developer terms. Cause that's the world he's in, which is understandable, yeah. but as a beginner, yeah. you're well out. Yeah. I've also gone back to my old thumbnail style. You may have noticed. Yes. Yeah, because it's just, it's easier and it works. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, right. Bit, a bit of ranting, bit of fun. Love for Obsidian, hate for everything else. <laughs> oh, actually, as a, as a final comment, my blog is mm -hmm. my channel now. So every video that, so this is just for reference for other people, if they want written content, I've taken inspiration from Red Gregory. Yeah. Um, just like upfront and saying my blog is like Red Gregory's Notion blog, but for Obsidian. It's got the video at the top and it's got the written explanation. Sounds good. So yeah, I'm, I'm helping everyone out. And I might put stuff in emails. We'll, 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 we'll figure that out. Cool. Thank you very much, people. Yeah, not that you really had a choice. No. Well, you, you had a choice to click it once, but once you're listening, you're not allowed to not listen. But that's the rule. It's the rule sit of podcasts. Down. You've got to sit down or walk your dog or whatever you're doing. You're going to listen to all of it. Well, it could be on YouTube, so. Oh, yeah, of course. I have noticed Cause... if I put Obsidian in the thumbnail or the title, uh, it gets better views, so... We need to talk about obsidian. Basically, we'll have one moment of just obsidian, and then the rest of the time we'll talk about everything else. Yeah, like a ten minutes. You put like a, a, you put a little bit of like I just put obsidian section. Whoop, people will get there. Viewership. <laughs> rest of the stuff. Oh. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yep. Right. All right. 
See you next time. Yeah, see you next week, everyone. Well, talk to you next week. Whatever.